Hello and uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Graham Cliff and I'm one of the pre-sales consultants here at Walters Clue Tax and Accounting in the UK. It's my uh, pleasure today to be hosting this webinar covering an introduction to both CCH uh, personal tax and CCH corporation tax. As you saw from the, the last slide, the, the webinar will last approximately one hour, there or thereabouts. And there will be time at the end to answer any of your questions. So as we go along, please feel free to ask away throughout the webinar using the webinar GoToMeeting panel. If we do run out of time at the end, um, I, I will answer any questions separately if required. So uh, don't worry if, you, if, if we either can't answer it at the end, um, we, can, we can always take that offline and, and come back with a follow up. Um, the, okay, so the, the session today um, will be focusing on four key areas um, as, as displayed in, in the current slide. Um, so what we're looking to cover is an introduction to both CCH personal tax and CCH corporation tax, um, showing you where these products actually sit, where they sit how you can access them, um, how you can navigate around them. Um, we are going to go through some data entry examples as well in there um, so you can see how they work. Um, it's going to be reasonably high level so we're not going to get into masses of detail um, but it should give you um, a flavour of, of, of um, how, the, how the software operates. Um, we're also going to look at how these products integrate uh, not only with CCH Central itself so in terms of central, we're talking about things like pulling through addresses, maybe UTR numbers, maybe national insurance numbers, uh, company reg numbers, et cetera. Um, so not only how it integrates with CCH Central, how they integrate with that, uh, but also other products in the suite. So in particular, accounts production and how we can pull the data through if you if you use our accounts production package, how you can pull that data through um, either manually um, or you can fully automate that process so that everything comes through without having to, to click any buttons. Um, so we can look at those processes and the data that will come across um, using full automation to, to populate those relevant compliance areas. Um, we're also going to touch on integration with our document management system. So if we do a tax return, um, if you're using our document management system, it will it will save automatically in there. Um, obviously, if you're not, you can still save it to a network drive or to another document management system. Um, but obviously, the integration of that uh, makes you know the storage and management of those documents more efficient. Along with that, we're also going to look at messages and the messages and documents side of our CCH one-click product, which forms part of our solution from a GDPR perspective uh, with regards to being able to obtain electronic approval of documents in a secure environment. And what we'll do is we'll use the example of asking a client to approve their SA100 uh, via CCH one-click messages and documents uh, just to show you how this would work. Obviously you can still send tax returns out by paper, you can email if you if email them out to clients as well if you want to so the facilities will be there in the system um, but from a GDPR perspective um, obviously our, our recommendation would be to use some form of secure portal um, which is what the messages and documents side of one-click will do for you um, and allows the client to elect electronically um, approve their tax return. We're going to do a live demo of completing and filing um, an SA100 to HMRC. Um, we'll also do or we'll also complete uh, a CT600 to do some basic data entry on there. We'll probably just do the online filing example for the SA100 um, but once you've seen that you'll get the gist of it for the CT600 and obviously if people need any more details or want follow uh, further sort of follow-up demos we, we can arrange that. Um, with regards to personal tax the system does deal with trusts and partnerships and that data can be pulled into um, the, the, the SA100 so if there's trust income, if there's partnership income um, th th those uh, forms of data can be um, pulled into an individual's personal tax return. Um, again, 
that can be automated. Um, it can be sort of semi-automated if you want to click a button for that to come in. We're not going to uh, um, fo focus on that today. Um, uh, in terms of there are time restrictions and it will it will go into too much detail. So again, if you want further information on that, have a look on our website, um, or we can provide uh, further details after after the webinar. Um, and then the last, I guess the last bit that we're going to concentrate on really is how we can effectively um, monitor tax return progress and reporting. And also we'll have a, a Q&A session at the end. If anyone's got any questions, we can um, we can have a look at those. There's a couple of, of questions that I'll I'll kick, kick off with so that, um, that, that people might ask, usually ask. So we'll look at how one of the most important things when I was in practice um, is how can we um, how can we actually monitor progression of returns effectively? And rather than it being a rigid structure, what we're going to be looking at here is CCH workflow. And obviously, you know, from firm to firm, people um, monitor and have uh, different steps. They have uh, different processes. And whilst there are standard workflows in our system. Um, you, there is the ability in there to, to tailor that. So again, we're going to look at um, the functionality there because that is one of the most important things in, in being able to track where you are up to with, with tax returns, whether that be CT600s, whether that be SA100s, whether that be trust returns, partnership returns, etc. So what are we what are we trying to achieve? So we we want to demonstrate how. Um, both these compliance products can streamline the compliance process from start to finish, uh, not just only from a, a data entry perspective, uh, but also from the viewpoint of something like sending a covering letter to your client outlining their tax position. So for the SA100s, we have a function called the tax return bundle in the system, um, and this will um, produce a covering letter that you can send out with your tax return to, to your client where it can pull through um, the figures of their liability, their repayment, and there is various other bits of automation um, that you can bring into that. Um, very often in practice, sometimes you find that the actual tax return letter can take you longer do it than doing the actual tax return itself. And that's why if you can streamline the process of perhaps um, creating the letter and maybe getting it set up so that you have a, a, a good base to start with um, and you're not copying and pasting you know, old letters from last year or cutting and, cut and pasting um, addresses that could be wrong. If you're using our tax return bundle function to pull that uh, address data, to pull those figures from the SA302, um, you know, that data should be accurate and you're not then transposing figures um, on tax return letters and things like that. And obviously, we'll look at how we can still tailor that letter because we'll, we'll like with anything, um, you know, usually there needs to be some uh, personalization to it and that sort of stuff. So we're going to have a look at those things as well. Um, we're also um, going to look at um, how we can obviously file a tax return. Um, how we can push those things into um, into our document management system as well. And I guess the other thing we're looking at is to alleviate the issues of monitoring the compliance progress using CCH workflow. So again, this should ensure um, there are uh, there's a lesser requirement to, as you reach the end of January, the 31st of January filing deadline, um, for people to continually print off reports or um, you know, constantly um, printing off maybe spreadsheets or things like that. Um, the, the CCH workflow product um, will give you a real time view within the software. You can export it to Excel. You can recreate reports in the system, but it's going to give us a real time uh, view of, of where everything is up to and also who within the practice is responsible for the next step in the workflow. So who is responsible for reviewing that that return? And you can look onto the screen and you can see who's responsible for for that step in the workflow and um, without having to get up from your desk. You can then you don't have to go and you know ask around the office who's got this, who's this with review for the CCH workflow product will we'll tell you that. So that's what we are um, we're trying to achieve here um, in this session today. Um, so why choose uh, CCH tax software? Well, for me, 
um, the, the key areas are really to do with automation and integration with other areas of, of the suite. So for example, in terms of automation, um, the system will automatically assign tasks using um, CCH workflow. So in line with your, your, your compliance processes, um, the system will assign tasks to individuals within the practice. Again, so everybody knows where everything is up to and who is responsible for doing what. So if someone is listed as a manager on the client, and a particular step, for example, a review step has to be done by that manager, they will be sent an automated task um, to then um, carry out that review of that tax return or, or whatever it is um, the, 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 the task is about. So there's, again, nothing manual in terms of sending tasks to people. We can automate that process um, if we want to. You can reassign tasks to people again, so we'll see that how, you know, you might not have capacity to review something and you might want to pass that task to someone else. But again, by doing it through the workflow system, you can track um, who you've assigned it to rather than just taking a file and putting it on someone's desk and thinking, who did, who's that with? Where's it up to? You can you can see that from one of the home pages within, within the software. Um, I suppose further and a further example of automation is, is the automatic accounts data update. So again, you can pull through the data from accounts production if you're using it into CCH personal tax, into CCH corporation tax. Um, so it, it's integration and in terms of automation, um, you can have it so that that data just automatically comes through um, whenever you post a journal um, within um, in accounts production. If you want it that way, you can have it that way. Um, I'll show you the way I have it. Um, so you'll see that when my data comes across from accounts production, but actually I decide when I want to update um, either personal tax or corporation tax. Um, but you can have it so it's fully automated. So we'll have a look at that as well. And again, automation again is the production of, of say, for example, tax return letters for SA100 is, is automating some of the paragraphs in there. Uh, that come through in those letters. Um, so what I mean by that is rather than you looking at the calculation and seeing that the client has a repayment and using the repayment template, um, the system is clever enough to see that and see that the client has a repayment and therefore use the relevant paragraphs. Likewise, you'll see that when we change the calculation, if they then have a liability, you'll see that the letter will produce um, a different set of paragraphs. And that's um, governed by what we call business rules in the setup of the tax return um, letter functionality. And again, um, we can you can you can obtain further details on that if required. Um, there are there are details on our website with regards to the, the tax return bundle function, but that is a something that again can be a real key time saver. Um, in terms of production of, 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 of covering letters with tax returns um, in, your, um, in your compliance cycle. So automation um, is one area. Um, examples of uh, integration, again, linking with accounts production, um, linking with document management. So again, saving documents in there, um, maybe once you've sent them off to a client. Also, um, attaching documents that sit in our document management system as well. So maybe you're filing a tax return and you want to attach, um, you're filing a self, an SA100 and you want to attach maybe a broker statement um, uh, or something, maybe some, some calculations that you've done. Um, you, again, you can pick them up from the document management system. Obviously you can pick them up from external drives as well, but it's keeping all of that data in one area um, within within the database. And I suppose another important point there is CCH one click. So integration with CCH one click, um, not only um, from, um, from a perspective of messages and documents. So our CCH one click product, um, maybe for those who haven't heard about it, it's a cloud-based um, platform, but it's where you will do things like do your um, making tax digital filing for VAT, um, for quarterly reporting for income tax. Um, it's also where you can um, look at the client's digital tax account. So data that HMRC 
uh, hold for the client and you can actually select that data and bring it straight into the tax return. So if you're not using CCH one click, you might be familiar with being able to view that information as a PDF um, if, you've, if, if, you, if you have, aren't using that. Um, but the one click product actually populates the return. So it's a real time saver in terms of um, not just bringing that data in, but very often if the revenue have got those figures, if HMOs have got those figures, um, you could, and your clients, you know, maybe, um, sort of not providing, hasn't provided that information, um, struggling a little bit and giving you that data, um, <clears throat> you can almost put the ball back in their court by saying, well, we've got your P60 details from the digital tax account. We've got your benefit in kind. We've got your state pension. We've got your class two NIC, et cetera. Um, so please confirm if these are correct. So in a way, it allows you to almost complete the tax return and, and push that um, onus back onto the client um, to to verify that those um, those figures are correct. And again, it's a huge time saver because you're not transposing figures um, into uh, into the system. So we'll look at integration with OneClick from a digital tax account perspective. And as I previously mentioned, we are going to ask the in a, in our example, we'll get our client to approve um, approve the tax return. Um, for, for an SA100 using um, the messages and documents service and the electronic approval um, rather than the traditional way of, of email or post. Um, so that's the integration um, side of it. So, I mean, again, why, why, why use either CCH personal tax or CCH corporate, corporation tax? Hopefully what you'll see when we go through and look at this is how easy and intuitive the navigation is. Um, when I was in practice, I used a number of different products. This is by far the easiest to navigate around and the easiest to pick up. Um, you can drill through the tax return in, in more than one way. Um, so uh, you can drill through the calculation. You'll see that the calculation live updates, so there's no rerunning of the calculation, um, which can be used as a tax planning tool, which you'll see. As we've sort of covered, really, integration with other products. Um, so um, you know, accounts, document management, uh, one click. Um, also, there are other products that we do support in the software. There's um, there's a P11D product that will will pull in P11D data as well, uh, which we we can give you a, a quick demo of as we as we go through. So there's various integration um, within um, within the CCH suite. And all this is obviously designed to help expedite the, the compliance process and make it as quick, quick and as accurate as possible. Obviously, speed, we want to we want to speed things up so that maybe um, there's not as many clicks. There's not as much data to input. But obviously, that data needs to be accurate um, so that we're giving our clients the, the correct um, tax position. And then finally, again, it's effective tracking of tax return progress. So again, going back to CCH workflow um, and, and using the system um, to track um, where we're up to on our, on our tax returns. Okay, so what we're going to do is jump into, um, we're going to jump into our um, interpersonal tax now. So we're going to actually go into um, the software itself. And I'm just going to close everything down, but that screen that I've got open there. So um, what we've got in front of us here is a personal tax um, homepage. Um, again, within within the, the software, you can have home pages for a variety of different things. You can have a corporation tax one, um, you can have a workflow one, you can have a document management one. So there's various home pages that you can have in the software. Um, this home page is for personal tax and it shows us all of our personal tax clients in here. Um, so again, it shows us individuals, partnerships, trusts, um, and it acts as a shortcut first and foremost in directly into the tax return date in, into the tax return area for the client. So, for example, this client here, James Harris, if I just click on to the blue hyperlink, it takes me straight to where I can actually access his tax returns in the system. Whereas if I go through the client list and type in his name and double click on his record, it takes me into his CCH central record and then I can click on tax returns um, and go into it that way if I want to. Not hugely onerous, but obviously going through the um, 
going through the, the, the home page is, is far quicker. Now, what you can do on here is you can search by code, name, UTR, um, you can put things in ascending, descending order, etc. Uh, the other thing that you can do on this home page is if you right click, you can filter it down. So if we wanted to look at, you know, just your allocation of clients or an employee's allocation of clients, we can do that in here. We can look at maybe just a particular office, a particular department. So you can filter all of these things down. So for example, here, it's looking at me as an employee. I could change that name if I wanted to. If I click on client partner, that's gonna be a list of all personal tax clients where I'm listed um, as the client partner. Um, in the system. So you can filter this down if you want to, um, again, in various different ways, and you can get those filters to hold as well so that you'll see that, you know, your, your allocation of clients every time you come in. Um, there's a filing status on the right hand side. It just gives us an overview of where we're up to with our tax returns, a snapshot. Again, if you do a right click, you can filter that in the same sort of way, well, exactly the same way, um, you, you can filter it down so that you're replicating your, your client list on the left-hand side. Um, you can also do a summary report. So again, if I click on summary report, we can see as a snapshot where we're up to um, in, the, in, the current, um, in the current compliance cycle for 2018 tax returns. And if you want more data in there, um, you can export it to Excel, or you can do a detailed report so again, if I do a detailed report, that just opens up and tells me where I'm up to or where these particular clients up to, what step they're up to. Um, and these steps will automatically change um, when, thing, when, the, when the, the return is rejected, created, rolled forward, accepted by FBI, filed by internet. So again, we're not really having to do anything with that if we don't want to. Um, and again, down here, we've got a list of employers. So again, if you're setting up employers um, in the system, which you will do, um, again, you can see uh, a list of employers there and you can access those records um, if, you, if you need to do that. So that's the personal tax homepage. Now, I, I guess coupled with that, we might as well look at this while we're in here, is, is, is CCH workflow. So again, this is perhaps um, the monitoring tool that I would um, recommend that everyone would use for whether it's a compliance process or just a process within uh, the business generally, um, you, can, um, you can use CCH workflow to track that. And this is a, uh, this is a task driven system, so it will automatically um, create tasks for us. And you can see here in my workflow, um, the various steps that I've got in here. It's all looking at the 2018 tax year. I could have different years there. There's my clients showing me who the manager is. Again, there's different fields that I can bring in um, if I need to. And these ticks just show me steps that have been completed. So we can see on this client, John Bain, that we're waiting for the tax return to be completed. Now, if I want to, from here, I can see who is um, who's who's due to do the next step, or who's done a step on a client, who's completed a step. So I do that by doing a right click, and if I untick the use icons, first of all, I can have dates of completion. If I want to, I can also bring in dates of of when steps are due to be completed as well. And again, when they become over, when when steps become overdue, or when workflows become overdue, that they, they, they will you will be highlighted, they will turn red um, so that you can see that. So here we can see see the dates of when some of these things have been completed. Um, if we want to, we can also see actually who is responsible um, for the next step in, in the workflow. So you can see here this one, Caldo Settlement. It's actually me who's completed everything up to tax return completed. Um, and each step that would have allocated me a task automatically it would have known that I would be responsible for those steps. It's reached the stage of the tax return needing review. And actually it's saying now up to the manager to review it. And in this case, it's Nick Moss, who's the manager. So where this flows through to on a task basis is you can have a tasks homepage. And again, you couldn't have the tasks homepage on here as well. So you can shrink this down. I've got a separate tasks homepage. So if I go into my tasks, you can see there for um, if I just do a right click on here, 
And if I look at Nick's tasks, when I go to Nick Moss, click onto there, and there's the Caldo settlement, and down just highlighted there. And can you see that showing that Nick has got um, some of my tasks have turned red because they're overdue, and they're not necessarily all to do with um, personal tax. Some of them might be other forms of, of workflow that I've got. Um, but you can see there that Nick is now, he's got a task to, to go and do, um, to go in and review that tax return. So if he wants to, um, Nick can review the tax return, he can click on the task and he can actually sign this off from here. So if he did pass, if he passed it, if we then went back to the workflow homepage, um, that would actually sign and tick that step off for us. It could be actually that Nick is um, too busy to review the return. So if he wants to, he can reassign that task to someone. So he could say, um, too busy, please. Um, or maybe he might say, review not required. And he could just pass that back straight to me or something like that. Um, or that's, that could be built into the workflow. So he can click OK and reassign that task um, back to me. Again, you can say it's high importance, low importance. And again, we can see the history of the task as well. So this is again, in terms of tracking this from an audit trail, um, we can see where these tasks are going. Um, so there's nothing in terms of putting, you know, files on people's desks and not knowing um, where things are, where things are up to in the system. OK, um, and then we can see there the Caldo settlement, that task has now passed to me um, to complete that review stage um, within uh, within the software. So the workflow homepage, um, it gives you a an overall sort of management view of, of where you're up to. With, with tax returns. The task homepage is gonna show you, you know, these are the individual tasks that you might have to do for, for, for a number of different clients. Um, you can filter this homepage at the top. Um, so not only can you drag these column headers here, um, but you can also filter the homepage up here. So again, if you wanted to, you could filter this down to say manager or team member. So team manager is equal to, and I could say again, Let's pick Nick as our example. Nick Moss, hit apply, and they're the um, they're the clients that Nick is responsible for um, within the self-assessment compliance process um, for the ones that have workflows attached. Um, alternatively, the other thing, sorts of things you could do with this, again, from a very basic perspective, perspective um, we could say, right, well, I want a list of all clients who haven't given me their data. So maybe I want to chase them in one go with a mail merge or an email. So I might say their data received status is empty. OK, so these people haven't given me their data. And then I could either highlight the whole lot. I could pick you know, just a few of them. Oops, I clicked into that by accident. Um, I could highlight all of them typically, maybe, or maybe a, sub, you know, a subset of them. Um, and then if I want to, then I can do a right click and I can chase them by email or letter. And again, that will be using a predefined template that I've created in the system. So you're not doing this on a bespoke basis and having to individually write to, to clients. You're using the power of the central database um, to chase chase our clients in, in, in there. So that's the one of the ways that you know you can you can effectively um, track where you're up to um, with your with your tax returns. Let's uh, go into actual interpersonal tax. So we're going to use this James Harris as our, um, as, as our example in here. Um, obviously, the system in terms of integration with, with, with Central as a database, um, it will use things like the, the, the NI number, date of birth for allowances and that sort of stuff. Um, UTRs, it will obviously ask us to, 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 that data has to be there for us to be able to file returns and things like that. So our tax return tab sits up here. Um, our accounts production tab is sitting next to it as well. So again, we'll look at how we can pull um, some data through um, from accounts production. Um, I'm just going to um, go into the tax return tab. And, and again, you can see, obviously, I've got historical returns there. Um, in terms of creating a self-assessment return, 
I can either hit the green plus or the, the link there. Um, and again, you can either create tax returns for SA100s or partnerships or trusts in bulk at the start of the tax year, or if you so you can roll them forward all in one go and attach a workflow, um, or you can create them one by one, maybe at the end of every job, or you can do a mixture of both. Um, so again, if, if you rolled forward maybe to 2019, um, and you do a bulk rolled forward, it's not going to overwrite anything that may, you've already created. But typically, um, so you might roll forward and do a 2019 return um, to do a, a draft calc, in which case you can maybe retain last year's figures and just maybe change a couple of figures if you're just trying to get a, a draft scenario for the client. So we're going to go into the 2018 tax return. Um, we're going to access this. Okay, so what are we what are we looking at here? We've got our live ca tax calculation, which we can drill down on. Uh, we've got our data entry menu. Now I've got the data entry menu shrunk down to the the sources I used last year, but actually, if I want to, I can expand that um, and I can look at all the different sources in alphabetical order. Um, so they're all there. Uh, all within the software. Everything you would expect to see. Anything that was populated last year. Uh, we can we it would expect the system expects that we're going to have it this year so it will ask us to pick up on that and any new sources we can go and look at that you can go back and forth between the years which is really useful but actually the most useful part of, of being able to do that is actually in the data entry areas themselves so for example interest from uk banks i can actually go back and forth in the actual data entry area. Okay, so I find that far, far more useful than having to come in and out of uh, a data entry source. Um, I can actually um, go and um, I can actually go and and um, go back in in the particular source and immediately see. So if I do that and click back, it opens up my 2017 tab to tell me what was on um, last year's um, tax return. Now, ordinarily, you would have locked that down. So again, if you go back when you've submitted the tax return, you can um, tick these all complete and reviewed boxes, either individually or it can be done in bulk with our review function. And again, that locks out someone making any changes to the tax return. So again, this all complete and reviewed can be used as a um, as a as a review function in in the software. So, for example, if we um, we're in the 2018 tax return for this client now. If I want to, um, I can either mark a line as complete or I can mark the whole section. If I mark it as complete, so as a processor of the turn, on the data entry menu, it tells me that that area is complete. You can see the calculations updated and it's hyperlinked. So again, I'm not rerunning any calculations. And if I wanted to, I can drill into the calculation to access that screen. Um, now, if I click on reviewed, and come out of that screen again, that then marks that particular area as reviewed and it locks it down for changes. You can unlock it again, like with most things within the system, it can, it's all task permissions as to who can lock and unlock, who can file online, and um, who can do various things within here. So you can control um, a lot of those things within, um, within the software. Um, so that's obviously showing me that, you know, that area has been um, has been reviewed. I'll just unlock it for now um, and go back. So you can see that updates the live calculation. Um, if I go back in there, um, if we're in a data entry area, we can also um, click on the actual summary box at the bottom. Um, so again, in, in terms of adding stuff, we can just go in and we can we can type in if we want to. We can free type or we can pick from a list of banks in the system and bring those in. So you can store banks in there if, if you want to do that. Once you put those figures in there, um, again, if you click on, say, the actual box number, it actually takes you out to the tax return. And vice versa, if you double click on the tax return, um, depending on how many entries there are, but if I go to it, it will take me back to the data entry area. Okay, so, so again, if you don't know where something sits on the return, um, if you don't know where something goes on the return, then you can, um, let me just delete that row. Okay, then you can, um, you can drill through the tax return. So an example of that might be maybe student loan or something like that. 
I know it's on page five of the tax return or maybe the high income child benefit charge, double click on it and it's taken me to tax return other information and there's that child benefit um, data entry area. And again, I can click on the boxes to drill through. So you can drill through both ways in the tax return. Again, you can shrink the return down um, if, you, if you need to do that. So let's just come back out of here. So you can see the calculation is, 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 has already been populated with some data. Along the top here, we can view the return. We can view the schedules and any HMRC help notes. Um, there's online filing, which we want to look at. The agent portal is there as well. So we can look at statements of account. Um, there is an automated review product, um, which we, we may not touch on. We might have a look at that. But again, that gives us a basis for um, reviewing um, tax returns. So it gives us a starting point um, for how we can review tax returns. There's working notes that we can put in. Um, so again, we can put, these are file notes that appear not on the tax return, they're just for users of the system. So again, if I go in here, I can see um, working notes, I can add them for this year, I can add them for next year. So maybe the client says I've sold something or this is applicable to my 2019 return. We can add notes that will then appear on next year rather than having to make um, file notes on a record. And we can also look back at last year's working notes as well. You could print them off as well if you want to. So again, one of the things that I would obviously do if I was doing a return is go back and look at last year's um, tax return notes as, a, as the very first thing and easy access there, very, very quick to do that. Um, so there's some the options there in terms of deleting returns and things like that. Now the digital tax account is how you can pull data through um, from um, the client's digital tax account in our one click product. If you don't have one click that will just open up as a PDF report. If you do when you click on it, it's going to take you to the client's digital tax account in our, in our one click product. And what you can actually do from here, and again, I'm only going to do it on a couple of sources, is I can actually um, populate the tax return. Just bear with me. I might just need to come out of that. I can actually populate the tax return with this data. Um, so if I commit that into personal tax, so this is data taken directly from um, HMRC. OK, so it's coming through um, employment income, uh, benefits in kind, um, pen pension income, state pension, marriage allowance, that sort of stuff. Um, I can then pull that data um, straight into the personal tax return. So there we go. Data was sent to per personal tax commit was successful. And if we now go back into the actual tax return itself, we should see that that data has been um, pulled in. So you can see there, there's the income. And again, we can drill through the tax return if we want to. OK, uh, in terms of data entry, again, I'm going to just I could have brought more stuff in there, but I'm going to click into Shell. Uh, I'm just going to go in and put in some some um, income in there um, and maybe just put in some tax as well. Again, benefits and expenses, if I haven't used the DTA to import them, I can use our P11D product um, and I can bring in um, I can bring in P11D data. So that's pulled in if I've used our, our P11D product to, um, to uh, create uh, the, the actual P11D. Um, OK. So we've looked at how you can pull data through um, from the digital tax account. Um, we're just going to have a quick look at income from uh, UK securities. So if I go into the. OK, again, I can put private dividends in here if I want to. Um, I can also use our FTSE 350 dividend feed so we can pull dividends through from the, uh, the top 350, uh, the FTSE 350 uh, into the software. So if I click onto the and if I search for, say, Centrica as an example, uh, I can then say how many Centrica shares I've got. And that will show me the dividends that Centrica paid during the 2017-18 tax year. I can delete uh, I delete them if I want to or one of them. 
I can change the shareholdings as well or add another shareholding. If I click on next and click on finish, that populates um, that data into the tax return for me. If I just do a save and close on there, one of the really useful things that you can do um, within, um, within personal tax is detach the screen. Um, now, if you're working off dual monitors, if I detach this tax calculation, OK, you could drag this calculation across to your other monitor. And if you're trying to look at things from a planning perspective, I've just gone back into my dividend area and I'm just going to enter a private dividend, um, just a figure in. And hopefully you'll see that the calculation will update. So you get a live position, a live tax position, which you can use if you're on the phone to the client. You could say, well, hold on, if we pay this dividend, if we pay that dividend, this is the the net effect and, and what's going to happen um, with the actual tax due. You're not having to rerun calculations. You can see that position even if that even if that um, calculation is on your other monitor, you'll be able to see that. Okay. So you can you can see that the the calculation is building up. Um, down at the bottom here, we've got an errors and exceptions panel. Um, so, for example, um, there is something down here with regards to that there's data available for um, from CCH accounts production. Select this message to update business tax automatically. I have my system set so that the data comes through from accounts production automatically, but I actually choose to, to click that message to then update business tax. So I'm controlling it. You can have it so that it just fully up updates both ways. Um, or you can manually have it so that you push the data from accounts and you then have to um, update a business tax um, uh, manually as well. So there's, there's flexibility in, in terms of how people um, want to update the business tax area. So again, if I want to, I can click onto that and that's going to pull through my profit from self-employment. Obviously, I could go into the business tax area, do my capital allowances and, and that sort of thing if I wanted to. Um, OK, so you can pull um, data through the errors and exceptions panel as well. Um, if I come out and just remove this UTR for now, so I'm just going to cut that out and just pop it in there for a minute. And I'm just going to go back into our tax return. OK, let me just click OK on there. OK, you'll see that um, again. The UTR is missing and that is an error message. It's a, an in, a key indicator that I can't file a return without a, uh, a the, without the UTR um, in the correct box and it will stop me from filing that return. So error messages will stop us filing. Uh, warning messages will be things that maybe the national insurance number is missing, but that wouldn't necessarily stop us um, from filing the tax return. Uh, messages might be there's things like figures from accounts production available. And again, you can click on to the, um, the, the UTR or the, the, the message. And you can then um, you can basically fix that issue. So it will take you um, to where you, you need to go to. To, uh, to, to alleviate the problem if there are any, and then it will disappear. If there are any more issues, um, then that will um, come back um, and, and it will pop back up for you to, to head those issues off before you get to the stage of, of, of IR marking the tax return. So in terms of um, sending a return out to the client, um, if we go to online filing, OK, we can validate this tax return. Um, again, this is where we can pick up additional documents to attach either from our document management system um, or from a network drive. So maybe um, a, a broker statement or something like that. And I'm just going to generate the IR mark, which date stamps this return um, so that um, you know, it's a version stamp of the tax return um, so that we are saying, you know, this is the version of the tax return that the client is signing. OK, and it says this tax return is waiting uh, a client approval. Um, I'm actually now going to go to our tax return bundle function and I'm going to send this client their tax return uh, using the bundle function. Um, if I just create the bundle, we'll see what this looks like. Um, just why that's creating what this is actually doing is putting everything into one PDF document for me. OK, so we can see in here now 
that um, this has pulled through. And again, you don't have to have a table like that with grid lines. Um, you can you can edit this and change it the way you want to. Um, but it's pulled through. Um, again, we didn't enter any payments on account, but it's pulled through all of that key data. I'm not transposing any figures um, within um, the software. And it's put everything into um, one PDF document for me to then send off to the client um, uh, within the system. So that you can edit the letter. So again, that you can go in and, and add your own paragraphs. You can take paragraphs out. You can edit the paragraphs that are in there. Um, I'm just going to publish this to the to our CCH uh, one click um, to ask the client to now electronically um, approve um, that document. So again, rather than type a message in, um, I'm going to use a template. I'm going to ask the client to electronically approve that document. I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to get. I'm now going to send that off to the client um, for him to um, for him to now approve that document. So what would happen now is that our client will will go to their um, email account, and very quickly we'll just uh, we'll just show you that. Okay, so there we go. There's the message that Mr. Harris has got from me. Ooh, there we go, that one there, sorry. I don't know why that one's there. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, so you have a new message on your uh, workspace uh, from GC Tax. Please click, click this link to log in. He can then log in to his secure uh, messages and documents area, and he can electronically um, approve that tax return. So he can go and um, he can log in whether he's on um, whether he's on a laptop, whether he's on his mobile phone, whatever he's on. You can see there one red, one red message, one document. Click onto the and he's then got a document to approve. I click onto the message. There's the um, the tax return. He can open it up and view it. He can have a look at that um, document that I've sent to him. When that opens up, there we go. And then once he's happy with that, he can tick the box and he can he can reject it or reply, but he'll typically hopefully approve it. And to approve it, he just puts his password in. Okay. And all of these messages are getting saved into our document management system as well. Um, OK, so all of those messages are um, getting saved into our document management system. Just bear with me one moment. I think I closed that down by accident. Let's just go back in. And make sure we did actually approve that document. Nope, there we go. I think I must have clicked on something by accident. So let's just approve that document. So click on approve. That's going to approve that document, and we're going to get a notification within um, CCH to say that that um, tax return has been um, approved. So we'll just wait for that to um, to come through into the software. There we go. There's our pop up. I would have got an email into my Outlook as well. So he's, he's approved that document. Um, and from there, um, I can go and um, I can go once I'm happy with that. I could either I can go into online filing and submit the return. I could also submit it through um, the workflow if I wanted to do that. But I'll go into online filing. And we can then um, submit that off to HMRC. So I'll click to submit to HMRC. Um, and I can then say, yes, I want to send that off. And that will then send that tax return off to HMRC. We'll get a response report from the revenue um, by email. Um, and we can see when that's been accepted. So you can see the status at the top there 
is telling us that that tax return um, has been um, accepted by FBI. And again, it will stop in a minute um, to show us that, that um, that's been accepted um, by the system. Okay, so we've successfully filed that tax return. There's our response report from HMRC and our digital signature. Um, so we can um, so we can see that. Okay. So we've now filed successfully filed um, that um, self-assessment tax return. So that sort of um, covers our, our demo in terms of um, personal tax. Obviously, if you've got any questions, um, start to uh, you know, obviously fire them through if there's any questions you want to ask or anything like that. Um, what we're just going to go into now and have a look at is our, um, our corporation tax. We won't do as much data entry in here because you probably get the gist of it, um, but we'll go in and have a look at um, corporation tax um, within the software. Again, the same things apply in terms of um, workflow. You can obviously use that for um, for uh, corporation tax as you can for um, for personal tax as well. So, okay, we're going to use Harris Limited as our example. And again, this is obviously set up as a limited company. We've got our tax return tab here, so it's opening up our, our options to go into our period of accounts. Just before we do that. If I go to my home pages, just like personal tax, there's a corporation tax home page. Um, I guess here, you know, one of the main differences here, again, there's a pie chart, but there's also this online filing status that's telling us the due date, uh, you know, period of account uh, end, accounting period end date and the due date. So again, we can track you know, where we are up to and, and what um, CT returns need to be filed uh, and when. And again, these things act as a shortcut into um, the, the the actual compliance area. So there's a, the, a homepage that's similar in a way to the pers similar idea as the personal tax one. You can see obviously these historical periods in here. Um, again, we can create earlier earlier periods if you want to. You can click there to create a new period. Um, the IXBRL entity type can be changed at the bottom um, if we need to do that. So we're going to leave it on um, uh, the top option there. Um, if we go into our um, period of account, okay, this will take us into our, um, our, our CT600 data entry area. Okay. So that's taken us into our data entry area. And again, it's got a very similar layout to um, personal tax. The data navigator is slightly different, um, but the, the overall look, you've got your calculation, you have your errors and exceptions panel at the bottom, um, which you can, again, works on a very similar basis, error messages. There's, something, you know, there's a message down there telling me um, the, that there is information available from accounts production. Um, you, there is a data navigator that you can search on as well in here. Um, there's various options along the top. Same sort of thing if we go to uh, view, um, we can view the comp, we can view in, in, in full. Um, and again, you can drill through um, different pages of the computation if you, if you need to. Um, we can, if we go back in here, um, we can view the schedules, um, uh, we can view the tax return, sorry, um, any notes, et cetera, any the HMRC help guide if we need to. Same sort of thing with unused sources as we saw in, um, in personal tax. Um, update from accounts you can use if you're, if, you're, if you're using a more manual method, published to document management. If you're using our fixed asset register, uh, we're not in this case, but you can pull through any, any additions and disposals um, into, into corporation tax. Um, for this example, I'm just going to pull through um, some of the, the basic data. So turnover, profit or losses per account, profit or losses of fixed assets and depreciation. But you can insert a, a detailed profit and loss if you want to, and, and you can um, uh, do your add backs and you can do your tagging on there as well. So again, if you want more information on that, um, we, can, we can arrange a, a more detailed demo of the software. Um, so 
down here we've got some error message error messages that we might want to clear off so again it's just a case of clicking onto them and we can go and populate those things okay and they will disappear so again i can go and fill in the details okay and the, the minute i do that so just put that detail in there our error messages at the bottom of the screen are then disappearing um, the system's telling me that there's some some data available from accounts production so i'm going to click onto that okay and again i don't have to have that message coming through i can just have it so that the system automatically updates um, I just choose to have some control over that. And you can see if I go to my trading income, okay, that that then has brought through um, some, um, some the data effectively from accounts production. So there's my figures that it's brought through. So our depreciation is there. If I go to disallowable adjustments, I can go in and, 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 and enter some more uh, disallowable uh, adjustments in there if I, if I want to. Um, there are there's a various other bits of data entry that I've already done. There is a balance sheet analysis. So if I click into there, you can see that when we've pulled the figures through from accounts production, um, again, the um, we've got some additions and so, some disposals, and the system is asking us to. Um, I don't know what's doing that. Uh, the system's just asking us to um, analyze those out so that they. Um, so that they, uh, you know, they reconcile total additions as per the balance sheet, which we can do. So we can go and add in our additions uh, and disposals and then do our capital uh, capital allowances and claim our annual investment allowance um, on those relevant uh, on those relevant additions um, within the within the software. OK. So again, you can search um, in here if you're looking for anything. Um, so if you need to search for stuff, you can do. Um, so if you type in loss, you can go to loss utilization um, and that will take you to your, your losses area. There I've got some brought forward losses that I've put in. And again, all of those things will roll forward um, year on year um, if, they are, if they are relevant within um, the, the software. Um, let me just delete that out. Again, you'll see at the bottom of the screen here, there's all your supplementary pages. So again, you've got things like CT600A. Um, so if we go into the data entry area there, you've got your loans to participators. You've also got your um, claims and surrenders um, for, um, for any reliefs. Okay, so um, again, there's some group relief claims. Um, now again, we do have a module in here, um, if I come out of here, that will actually um, populate these areas for us. So again, if if, if the company is, is part of a group, on my Harris Limited uh, central record, I've got a tax group tab and it's got its own period of account set up. And within the group is Shark Limited and Harris Limited. If I go into that period, um, I can actually look at um, distributing any losses around the, um, so there's a 500,000 pound loss available there. And if I want to, I can then, um, I can update that uh, loss memo. And if I go back into Harris Limited, so if I go back into the period of account, okay, then it should have completed our um, CT600P uh, C, uh, supplementary page. Let's have a look. There we go. It's now turned bold because there's data in there. Um, it, okay, so if I look at claims, we'll have claimed a loss from uh, Shark Limited. Okay, so again, um, that has automatically populated that for us. So again, you, you don't have to manually um, manually uh, do those things within in the software if you don't want to. Um, just finally, you can post a tax journal um, back into accounts production. So the CT liability, if I click onto the and click OK, 
okay i can actually post that back into okay i can actually post that corporation tax liability back into accounts production and i can do that as an audit journal as well so that will post it back in if the liability then changes um, if you want to, you can repost it again and it will just post any additional liability if it's there. Um, so that has now posted that back into accounts production and we'd be able to see that there. Um, in terms of uh, you know additional sort of data entry, again, you've got complete, reviewed, estimated, um, and you can add um, you can add notes in various areas of the software again. So click click to add notes, and those notes will appear um, on the computation um, if you um, if you want them to do that. And I guess finally on on this area then, um, in terms of online filing, um, again online filing same same icon as personal tax that you can use um, to go into your online filing so you can click in to go into there okay there we go and you can basically go and then um, make a submission and, and file your CT return. Obviously, before you do that, you would need to pre-validate it and then send it out to the client to actually sign again, either print it off, email it, or publish it into um, CCH one click. Um, the accounts can be attached automatically from, um, from uh, IXBRL review and tag. Um, so you can you can automatically attach them to the submission. Alternatively, you can pick them up um, from wherever you've saved them um, if, you, if, if you need to and attach them to the submission. Um, so again, we won't go through an actual submission. It's very similar to personal tax. Um, hopefully you get the, giving you a flavor. You can, or in here, the system again, will do a test in live. Um, in, in, and that does a dummy submission of the return and when you pre-validate it to actually check whether it will be um, accepted by HMRC or not. So again, that um, covers off any issues that when the client signed it, there's no changes to it, um, it will definitely be, um, be accepted by, um, by HMRC. Um, so that um, covers our, um, our sort of covers off our, our, our demo of the software. I'm just going to go back to our um, slideshow. Okay, which is hopefully going to come up. Okay. Okay, so in terms of obviously personal tax, we, we looked at you know optimized data entry, live computations, um, easy e-filing with you know with with accurate success, the live errors and exceptions panel. Um, so again, how we can head off any issues, um, the automation of workflow with tasks. Um, we did touch on the return review product, um, but you can just, in terms of reviewing the product, you can mark those boxes as complete and reviewed. And we also looked at the tax return bundle in terms of creating a letter um, to send to the client. Um, in terms of corporation tax, um, again, we looked at how we can, you know, we can we 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 looked at the sort of data entry pulling through figures from accounts production. Um, the, the obviously the calculation is there. The errors and exceptions panel is there as well. Um, again, we can we've got superior first time filing, so it's the same very similar process to um, to to personal tax. There's loss utilization screens, and again we we also looked at group relief there and how um, we could um, push. Um, push any reliefs uh, around a group if we needed to. Okay, so that um, covers um, that covers the the demo. Hopefully, that's given you 
um, a flavour of it. We've obviously used up the, the full hour. Um, if anyone's got any questions, obviously please please feel um, free to um, to send them through. I guess a couple of questions that maybe do come up is uh, that people do ask is, um, you know, can we tailor the workflow headers? So can you create your own um, your own set of, of workflow headers? The answer is yes to that. You can. So again, it can all be tailored so it fits in line with, um, you know, what you want to call the steps um, in terms of the processes that you have within your business. Uh, maybe an example within personal tax is there a more extensive dividend data feed? Um, rather than just the FTSE 350. Again, the answer to that is yes, we do have a product called CDT Dividend Scheduling that has, uh, I think, roughly about 115,000 um, shareholdings on there. So again, that will through into personal tax and it will complete your capital gains pages um, and it will complete your dividend income um, pages as well. So again, we have uh, additional functionality on there um, should you should should you should that be required? Um, I don't know if anyone else has got any questions that they want to ask at all. So if you have, please feel free to um, to put them in. If not, we can always pick any questions up um, further down the line. Um, if if it's not something you think of now, we can we can um, we can pick those up if, if it comes if, it, if you think of them after after the webinar. Okay, so I don't think anyone's got um, any other questions at this stage. Um, hopefully that's been useful. So just to to wrap up, really, we've. We've covered everything that we, we set out to. Um, the webinar has been recorded, so a copy will be circulated to everyone uh, tomorrow. Um, I'd like to just thank you, everyone for taking the time out of their the busy schedules to attend uh, this morning. Hope you found it useful. Um, please don't hesitate to make uh, contact with us. Um, if uh, you've got any queries or you want sort of a more in-depth demonstration uh, again there's some options there in terms of uh, contacting contacting us as well uh, that you can see on screen um, other than that i hope you all enjoy the rest of the day um, thank you and goodbye